everyone, and welcome. It's the Division II State Track Prelim. It's a beautiful day at Welcome Stadium here at the University of Dayton, and we are excited to bring you the Division II Prelim Running. Our title sponsor is Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. Well, we start today with one of two finals. The girls 4x8 and the boys 4x8 are the only finals happening in these running races. And we've got two teams that we are watching. Versailles in lane four, Ottawa Glandorf in lane five. Here is who we have overall. In lane one, it's Talmadge and Lexington. In lane two, Woodridge and CBCA. Lane three, Huron and Athens. Lane four, Carroll and Oakwood. Lane five, Versailles or lane, I'm sorry, lane four, A, B, and C. Carroll, Oakwood, and Versailles, three in that lane. Lane five, Kirtland, Ottawa Glandorf, and Akron SVSM, St. Vincent, St. Mary. Lane six, Waynesville, and Fairfield Union. Lane seven, Salem and Minerva. Lane eight, Chagrin Falls, and John Glenn. First race of the morning is off and going. We've got bright sun. I would venture to say it's already a little bit warmer than the temperatures that we had last night for the Division Three prelims. Definitely not like what it was, though, a year ago um, back at the Jesse O Stadium in Columbus. 90s was the temperatures that the ladies ran with. This year, of course, we're at the University of Dayton just for one year because of track work that is being done back there at The Ohio State. Four by 800 meter relay, four girls. Each girl will run two laps around the track and our Ottawa Glandorf ladies come in with a 918.09. Not quite the top seed, but very close to the top seed. Those ladies broke the record last week at the regionals. It's Woodridge leading the way right there. They're the ones that do come in with the top seed time of a 915.53. Of course, in the 4x8, just about anything can happen. Each leg of the race tells a different story, and the story right now still is Woodridge in the lead. For Ottawa Glandorf, we've got Corinne Clausen leading off. At least that's according to what I have here on my list. Corinne will also be running the 800 tomorrow, as will her teammate, Liana Fortman. For Versailles, we've got Corinne Gabot leading off. And that lady that you see in the lead is Marissa Boone from Woodridge. So we've got one in the lead and a pack for the second spot. Looks like right now our Otto Glandorf ladies are in third place at the moment. Getting ready, uh, Corinne Claussen's getting ready to hand off to Liana Fortman. Oh. Actually, Ottawa Landorf has moved back just a tad bit. About sixth place right now. We're watching Versailles and OG. OG now has the baton, that's Liana Fortman. The freshman from Ottawa Glandorf, who also qualified in the Open 800. Katie Litton is the second runner for Versailles. That big W is still in the lead right there, but it's about to be challenged. Woodridge now moves into the second place spot. Ottawa Glandorf currently sitting at seventh, just about to move into that sixth place spot as Leanna Fortman gets ready to run the second half of her race.
All right, watching OG move up on that back straightaway. Not the only one, though. Of course, that is the time when you want to make that move. The last 200 now is the point where you've got to get the grit and you've got to get going because this is the part that hurts really badly for these ladies and their bodies. They put so much out at this point, especially at this meet. They are putting everything out that they possibly can. We are about to see another lead change here. Edward Glandorf sitting at eight at the moment. Liana Fortman handing off to Madeline Hovest. Katie Litton for Versailles handing off to Ava Rissmiller. Versailles actually has two freshmen and one sophomore on their relay team. Two ninth graders, one tenth grader, and one senior. So definitely some great future there for Versailles with the 800s. OG's currently sitting in sixth. Remember, the top eight will make it to the podium and will be considered all Ohio. The anchors are ready to take the batons. Anna Buttlemeyer for Ottawa Glandorf is right now getting the baton. It's Meredith Barga for Versailles. Here are the names of all of our anchors. It's Topanga Ross for Talmadge, Elena Weaver for Lexington, Reese Riemann for Woodridge, Jaina Cooley for CVCA, Riley Towns for Huron, Olivia Smart for Athens, Ruby Gross for Carroll, Delaney Cahill for Oakwood. And you saw a big lead change right there already. This is it, guys. Jacob O'Neill, our cameraman, was giving me some direction as I was looking down to read these names. You know, it's always fun to see what these anchors can do. Uh, you got to watch who you see here because you're probably going to see a lot of these people in the open 800 tomorrow as well. I just love being down here at the state because the, the intensity level is so, so big. It doesn't matter what the race is. There is going to be a race all the time taking place. To get back to what I was telling you, here's who we have. Madeline Barrett Barga for Versailles is the anchor. Sylvia Boisky of Kirtland. Anna Buttlemeyer of Ottawa Glandorf, and Rhea of Akron SVSM, Samantha Erbach of Waynesville, Anna Conrad of Fairfield Union, Maggie Hall of Salem, Kayla Chrisman of Minerva, Myla Gresh of Chagrin Falls, and Bria Wilfong of John Glenn. Why do I read those names to you? Because a lot of them aren't even local. Why? Because here at the state meet, we have an opportunity to see some of the top runners, not only in the state, but in many times also in the nation. A lot of these runners we see here are going to move on to the next level of competition in college, and then some of them even move higher. We have Ohio runners who are now on Team USA, people that we have interviewed 
right here on the station for a part of that. All right, take a look at this strong, wow. Oh my goodness, she has strength, she has stride, and she is sprinting her way to the finish so her team to win a championship. We're gonna watch these ladies come in. Oh, nice, nice job there by Ottawa Glendorf, passing there in the last straightaway to help her team move one more space up. We'll give you some reports right now in a moment of our top finishers. Salem is second place, Waynesville is in third. Huron, fourth. Ottawa Glendor finishes in fifth place. Athens in sixth. Oakwood in seventh. And Chagrin falls in eighth. And I missed the first place. And that, I believe, was Woodridge. 9.15.05 is the championship time in the 4x800 meter relay for the girls. Event number two, it's the boys 4x800 meter relay. This is the only other final running race of our uh, broadcast today. We just had the girls 4x8, now it's the boys 4x8, and our eyes are on lane seven with Ottawa Glandorf. Lane seven, Ottawa Glandorf. Here is who we have in the field. In fact, lane one is field. Also, Marlington in lane one, lane two, Indian Hill and Shelby. Lane three, Ontario and CVCA. Lane four, Woodridge, Warren and East Liverpool. Lane five, Bexley, Batavia and Lakeview. Lane six, Sheridan, St. Clairsville. Lane seven, Ottawa Glandorf and Jonathan Alder. And lane eight is Bay and Carroll. It's always interesting to watch the start of the boys 4x8 or even any 800 that the boys run because they really, really take off in a mad dash. I'm not going to say that the girls don't. Uh, they are obviously sprinting as well in their own right, but it's always interesting for me to watch these guys. And you're going to see that as they're in this pack here, uh, really, really battling it out. You may have heard me on a previous broadcast to say that I was an 800 runner back in my high school and college days. So I uh, strangely loved this race. I did love this race. And if you are a parent of a middle distance runner, you know they are special, wonderful, incredible people who are very, very focused and very dedicated. We are dedicated to watching Ottawa Glandorf and Mason Vogt is the leadoff runner for OG. They come in with a really nice time of 7.58.38, putting them in that top group of, uh, it's close, but they're, they're right up there. Our top seed time coming in is a 7.54.94, and that is from Marlington. Marlington will anchor with Colin Kranaski. Colin Kranaski, if you have watched our state broadcast before, you know he is a guy who can run. Mason Vogt from Ottawa Glandorf is also a guy who can run. The relay for OG as written on my heat sheet is Mason to Ethan, Isaac, and then Ty. Mason Vogt, Ethan Metzger, Isaac Mackey, and Ty Rosengarten. So OG looks to be, they're back in that pack a bit. It's still quite a pack. Maybe about ninth. It's kind of hard to tell for sure. You got a little bit closer of a look than I do. Not quite as high up as I was, we were at in Ohio State in years past. The seating is different here at the University of Dayton, but still you have a much closer view thanks to our wonderful cameraman, Jacob O'Neill. And I'm looking at guys that look kind of small, but look very fast. Man, that pack of second place, everybody who is vying for second place is really in that, in a pack there. One team is leading the way, that is Ontario, but the rest of it, it's too close to call right now. OG moving up to around fifth, the fifth spot, fifth place. I 
Ethan Metzger is who I have listed here with the baton. Really great to see Ottawa Glendorf, both guys and girls, how strong they have been this year in the track season. They've won. Um, I don't have all of the stats to tell you for sure, but every time I, I, I want to say they've won every meet. I can't say that that's the case for sure, but they have won so they have won so much, um, and it, I love how they're able to rebuild year after year after year. A big shout out to the coaches there who are clearly doing some great things both with cross country and with track at Ottawa Glendorf. First place continues to just dominate. And then the second place battle is battling on. OG has fallen back just a tad bit, getting ready to pass the baton to Isaac Mackey, who will work to move his team up just a, t just a bit. Just to give you an idea of the times that these uh, racers are, as far as relays overall, Marlington has a 754-94. Then we've got a lot of teams in the 758 range, which is also what OG is. We have two teams with 757, 755. Um, so the speed here is real. CVCA is trying to keep the second place spot, but it looks like they are about to lose that as we've got a team that's just moved from fourth into second and has a big eye on first. It's gonna be interesting to see if things change here. Oh, Ottawa Glandorf currently about 13th. I think may have moved just up into 12th place. While we're watching these guys come around, I just want to just call out um, some of the more local runners who will be running only in finals tomorrow. Now, for the Division II finals, instead of the full broadcast, we will be bringing you a highlight show so that we will have highlights of these. But on this broadcast, I just felt it was important to let you know we have some such great runners in the 3200 tomorrow, the 1600, uh, the 800. So for the 1600, Anna Buttlemeyer from Ottawa Glandorf will be representing the area, as will Kate Thormeyer from Bryan. In the boys 1600, Gabe St. Aboard from Liberty Benton, Ty Rosengarten from Ottawa Glandorf, Ty who's about to get the baton here, and Owen Scott from Van Wert. They will all be running on this track in the distance races tomorrow. We'll talk more about some of those other runners a little bit later on. All right, Ty Rosengarten grabs the baton and takes off. He's got a job to do. He's a strong runner. He's a team-oriented runner. He is a team-focused runner, and he is chasing down the pack and is about to pass someone. So Jacob, I'm not sure where your camera is, but let's take a look at uh, Ty Rosengartner back here on the back stretch for Ottawa Glandorf as he is getting ready to pass another runner here. He is really taken off here on this first 400. I'd love to find out what his split is. He has moved his team into ninth place right there. And he has his eyes on this next pack of people. Really can see him with those pink shoes just blazing down the track there. So let's see what happens here in this final lap of this race. Ottawa Glandorf sitting in ninth. Ty knows he's gonna have to make some moves here, maybe even on the curves, not exactly where you wanna make them. And here comes the straightaway, and this is gonna be the opportunity to make those moves. But these are all anchors, and the reality is they are all very, very strong runners. Oh my goodness, I think Ty's making a move right now. But so is the guy in front of him. Here we go, the final 200. And he is ready to do everything that he can to move his team up. We'll give you the results of the, uh, the, the top and the finish, but we want to keep watching Ty as he is, he's got one. Can he get the next one? He's got another one. Ty's Rosengarten moving Ottawa Glandorf up in the finish place. And we'll give you the results here just in, a, just in a moment as we watch them come through. That's Jonathan Alder in fourth. 
Ontario in fifth. Carroll is your first place. Marlington second. Woodridge third. Jonathan Alder fourth. Ontario fifth. Ottawa Glandorf finishes in sixth. Event number three will be next. It will be a prelim, the girls' 100-meter hurdles. There will be three heats. The top two in each heat will move on to tomorrow's finals, plus the next two top times. Our presenting sponsor of our D2 state track prelims is Laudix Jewelry. Laudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for more than 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at laudix.com. In heat one, Here's who we have running. Lane one, lane two, Kara Deister. Lane three, Angela Williams. Lane four, Isabel Evans. Lane five, Ariana Floyd of Firelands. Lane six, Zoe Caldwell of Cambridge. And lane seven, Joelle Cherry of CVCA. No local runners in this heat, but I chose to bring it to you because I wanted you to have an opportunity to see who's gonna qualify for tomorrow and an opportunity to watch some of the best runners in the state of Ohio. That's one of the premier fun things to be able to do here at the state meet. We get to see the caliber of running that is just at the top, top level. You know, it is not easy to qualify for state in the state of Ohio. There are so many prelims and finals that you have to get through to finally get to this point. And so we really, really do have top notch athletes here. First run over the hurdle is Isabel Evans, and she is leading the way here. She comes in with a 14-18 as her seed time, top seed time overall, and she is without doubt gonna win this first heat. Isabel Adam Evans places first, and Kara Deister plays second. Those are your auto qualifiers from this heat to tomorrow's finals. Heat two of three in the girls' 100-meter hurdles. In lane one, it's Ella Easterling of Norton. Lane two, uh, lane two rather, sorry, we're not using lane one. Lane two, Ella Easterling of Norton. Lane three, Brenna Wright of McLean. Lane four, Ava Littler of Canfield. Lane five, Ella Rucker of Bellevue. Lane six, Molly Kramer of Ostego. And lane seven, Claire DeRicke of Lake Catholic. Top time in the first heat was a 14.47. The third seeded time was a 15.55. Remember, the top two in each heat will move on, and then the next two overall times will also move on to tomorrow. So we are missing a runner there. Um, lane three, we do not have Brenna Wright from McLean. Your leader is in lane four, Ava Littler of Canfield, and she will finish in first. 14.53 is her time. Second place from Bellevue, a 14.98. And third place from Lake Catholic. Heat three of three, and we are looking at lane four, Isabel Henderson from Benjamin Logan. The other racers are lane one, lane two, rather, Leila Hall of South Point, lane three, Avery Davis of Brookside. Lane four, Isabel Henderson of Benjamin Logan, lane five, Adriana Crabtree of Steubenville, Lane 6, Maya Riggins of Reddy, and Lane 7, Jalicia Proctor of Meadowdale. Isabel was near one of the first ones to be over the track, but right now your leader is over there in lane six. Maya Riggins and Isabel Henderson are your top two finishers. Let's take a look and see what Isabel's time is. Draw your attention down to the awards for 
Waiting to see it cycle through there. Maya Riggins of Ready in a 15.08. Isabel Henderson of Benjamin Logan moves on tomorrow with a 15.15, so she will be running in the finals. Congratulations, guys. What's it like knowing you're competing for a state title in America? Um, it's kind of a really real kind of experience. It's crazy. Um, kind of just started doing hurdles, and so it's really weird to come this far. Um, I love being at state meet. I've been here before. So what's it like, you kind of being just getting into hurdles, and now you're competing for a state title? What does that do for your confidence level? Um, it makes me feel really good. Because uh, I'm going to college for track, so knowing that I can do many different events and go this far in all those events feels really good. Event number four is the boys' 110 meter hurdles. We've got two runners in this race. They'll be in heats two and three. We want to remind you that our premier sponsor of this event is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Heat one, here are your runners. Lane one, lane two, I've said, how many times have I said that, folks? Lane two, lane two, Grady Whitaker of Keystone. Lane three, Zion Woods of Chaminade Julian. Lane four, Chase Lipscomb of Fairfield Union. Lane five, Muhammad Corey of Lutheran West. Lane six, Wyatt Augsburger of Oak Harbor. And lane seven, Connor Hans of Woodridge. Sun is the sun is strong today, and it's a little bit warmer, as I've already mentioned, warmer than what we had yesterday. Nothing like we've had in the past. It's still very pleasant, but definitely feeling that heat just a bit more than we had yesterday in the D3 prelims. So I only count six guys there. It looks like we are missing Connor Hans from Woodridge. Lane four, Chase Liscomb, Fairfield. Wow, man, he's got a great 30 step there and slides his way, glides his way rather into the finish. Your top finishers are Lipscomb with a 14.25 and then Zion Woods of Chaminade Julian in a 14.68. Heat two of three in the boys' 110 meter hurdles prelims. We are watching lane two. That's owner Owen, Owen, sorry, Owen. It's Owen, not owner. Owen Wilkins of Liberty Benton. Colton Thomas in lane three from Indian Valley. Lane four, Bo Harkle Road of Huron. Lane five, Marcus Hubanks of Batavia. Lane six, Cameron Burgess of Chesapeake. Lane seven, Logan Border of Field. So that's Owen Wilkins. Lane two from Liberty Benton. This one's pretty tight. Take a look at the front four. This is gonna be a fight to get those top two spots. Let's watch and see the leaderboard to see who got it. First place was Huron. Harkle Road with a 14.46. Second went to Chesapeake, Batavia with third, and Liberty Benton's Owen Wilkins finished fourth with a 14.99. Remember, the top two seed times will make it on to tomorrow, or top two extras after the, the top two in each heat. So the top two, and then the next two. Heat three of three in the boys, 110 meter hurdles. We are watching lane two. That's Eli McNeil of St. Mary's. Next to him is Caleb Haig of Liberty Union, Devante Young of Dunbar, Braden Richards of Perry, not the Perry locally, but uh, uh, a different Perry, Nashon Kalins of Orange, and Carson Hotstetler of Indian Valley. One thing we are noticing, and noticed this yesterday as well, is the wait time 
is a little bit more before they actually get that gun off. Of course, they want everybody to be exactly still the way they're supposed to be. Not still at this point, though. Wow, look at the leader. Look at him kick that right leg over and cruise his way into the finals. And that is Devonte Young of Dunbar with a 1396. He's going to move in as the top seed time tomorrow. Richards from the non-Lima Perry. The other Perry is your second place finisher in this heat. Eli McNeil runs a 15.38 to get fifth. Moving now to the girls' 100-meter dash. This is event number five. Our presenting sponsor is Laudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for more than 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at laudix.com. Also, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's, where home style happens here. This is Heat 1, and we are watching Lane 3. Kendra Deering of Van Wert is competing. Also competing in Lane 2, Kylie Zamkinick of CBCA. Deering's in 3. Nyla King from Toledo Central Catholic in 4. Mariah Moore from Gilmore Academy in 5. Sabri Sabria Jones of Steubenville in six, and Tiana Burton of Bucktel in seven. Kendra Deering with a nice start, head up. Oh, Kanila King telling us what she's done. We watched her last year sprint her way so well, and Nyla King, still just a junior, cruises to finish there. She finishes in 11 9 9. Steubenville gets second. Kendra Deering finishes in third with a 12 6. So we'll wait and see if that's going to be a fast enough time to get her into tomorrow. Heat two, lane two, Olivia Hill of Wyoming. Lane three, Bryn McKeever of Buckeye Local. Lane four, Shana Coleman of Kenton Ridge. Lane five, Jane Kennedy of Hathaway Brown. We're watching lane six. That's Sierra Grieber from St. Mary's. And lane seven is Devonna Smith of Bucktel. Sierra Grieber in lane six in the blue jersey. Jane Kennedy from Hathaway Brown with the slight lead right now being battled by Shayna Coleman of Kenton Ridge. Sierra Grieber looks like she may finish fifth. We'll watch the leaderboard to see for sure. 12.26 is the top time. That is Hathaway Brown. Kenton Ridge coming in second with a 12.33. Sierra Grieber finishes fifth with a 12.65. The final heat in the girls' 100-meter dash, heat three, lane two. Alexis Shelton of Port Clinton. Lane three, Kayana Penn, Cleveland Central Catholic. Lane four, Dakota Houston of Beechwood. Lane five, Emma Henry of St. Clairsville. Lane six, Brianna Bratz of Lake. And lane seven, Emma Lane of South Point. So far, our top time run at this point is Nyla King from Toledo Central Catholic. From lane, or heat one, she ran an 11.99. Our local runners, Kendra Deering finished third in her heat in heat one, and Sierra Grieber finished fifth in her heat, heat two. A really nice start out of lane two, but we're seeing some great movement there in lanes three and four, and it's for Dakota Houston from Beachwood. She is your winner in heat three. This D2 state prelim broadcast is brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. This is heat one of three in the girls' 4 by 200 meter relay, and our eyes are on lane six. That's where Ottawa Glandorf is, Laney Hedrick is the leadoff runner in lane six. In lane two, it's Lexington. Lane three is Philo. Lane four, Bucktel. Lane five, Port Clinton. Ottawa Glandorf in six, and Beaumont in lane seven.
I know I've already said it a few times, but it is the top two in each of the heats that moves on. We have three heats with the University of Dayton Welcome Stadium being a little bit different than the setup at OSU. We also have a little bit different setup for the prelims. Three heats, and it's the top two from each heat that move on, and then it's the top two times after those top two. Handoff is complete for OG. Savannah Wrecker has the baton. Looks to be running pretty strong there. Of course, we still have the stagger going, but uh, you know, keeping up good pace there. Being challenged to her left by Port Clinton's Jade Mitchell. Looks like Port Clinton will be handing off first. Ottawa Glandorf, mm, third, fourth, about right now is where they are. Olivia Grothaus is who I have listed as the anchor, and she is taking advantage of her speed, doing a nice job around that curve and really striding out strong on that straightaway. Geis kick as she prepares to hand off to Avery Fox. <laughs> Bucktails Miana Mitchell, a freshman moving her way in, but Ottawa Glandorf currently in the second place spot. Can they hold on to it? Strong running right there by that Titan runner, and she is going to run her team into the finals tomorrow. OG finishes in second place with a time of 143.22. Heat three of three in the girls' four by 200 meter relay, and our eyes are on lane three. That is Van Wert. Gilmore Academy was the winner in Heat 2 with South Point second, and Athens was third. Don't forget, Ottawa Glandorf was the second place uh, finishers in Heat 1. We have Salem in Lane 2, Van Wert in 3, Lake in 4, Valley View in 5, Talmadge in 6, and River Valley in 7. Olivia Voss from Van Wert is who I have listed as the leadoff. Set. Olivia Voss getting ready to hand off to Macy Johnson, who will be the second half of this first lap. Looks like they might be around the third place spot based off the handoffs. Not exactly definite to be able to say that, but looked like it was close. Macy Johnson moving, moving as we know she can do. Got her eyes on that lake runner, trying to chase her down. Top two in this heat will automatically qualify for tomorrow. Harper Roop taking the baton. She's gonna pass off to Kendra Deering in another half of the lap. Top seed time coming in is Lake to the right. They are going to be anchoring with Brianna Bats, Bat, Bratz, rather. Annika Murray for Salem, Hayden Sorrell for Valley View, Emma Bozick for Talmadge, and Becca Cadle for River Valley are the anchors. All right, folks, this is where we get to see the story. Oh, 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 tough handoff there for Van Wert. Kendra Deering trying to pick it up there. Looks like she had to actually slow down to get that handoff. It's a battle between three runners for that first place spot. Kendra really, really trying to chase down, of course, wants to get in the, the next two times if possible. Lane four is your winner, that is Lake. Van Wert is gonna finish fourth. Hold on for a moment and we'll look at the times. Talmadge is second, Valley View third with a 144.52 and Van Wert finishes in fourth with a 146.37. This is event number eight, the boys four by 200 meter relay, and this is heat two of three. Our eyes are on lane three, and that's Ottawa Glandorf. In the first heat, Huron won with a time of 127.75. 
Glenville was second, 129.30, and Miami East was third, 130.54. In this heat, we have Ontario in lane one, Ottawa Glandorf in two, leading off with Gavin Mormon in lane uh, lane three, rather. I got to remember, we're not using lane one. Ontario's in two, Ottawa Glandorf in three, Bay is in four, CBCA is in five, Gallia Academy in six, and Woodridge in seven. Set. Gavin Mormon, the leadoff for Ottawa Glandorf, will be handing off to Alex Schroeder, according to what I have on the list. Sometimes uh, coaches do change their relays after the list has been printed. Looks like they're around maybe the third place spot right now. It's very close though, very tight. Schroeder gonna be leading or handing off to Dane Dooling. Outside runner from Woodridge. Of course, he has the stagger, but also looks like he is gaining some ground. Let's watch the handoffs and see where we are. Uh, oh, close handoff there for Ottawa Glandorf, but they did get it off, I believe. Dane Dooling trying to make up some ground there as he barrels his way around that curve and makes his way onto the back stretch. Still looking really strong out there in lane seven is Woodridge. But this is where we see the final thing. Always fun to see what these anchors can do. And the anchor for Ottawa Glandorf is Deegan Miller. They are anchoring with a freshman according to my list. Maybe, maybe it's different, but that's what they've got here. Lead change has happened. And the top runner right now is lane four. That is Bay. And Bay is gonna get it with CVCA to the right will be the second place. Oh, we had one person fall at the end. Hopefully he is all right. Times are 128.72 for Bay, 129.18 for CVCA. Woodridge is third, Ontario is fourth, Gallia Academy is fifth, and Ottawa Glandor finishes sixth with 131.93. Our next event is event 11, is the girls' 4 by 100 meter relay. Our entire broadcast is brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. It's out to Ultimate Outdoor. Our presenting sponsor is Laudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for more than 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at laudix.com. And our premier sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wampak, Delphus and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. This is Heat One and our eyes are on lane six. That's where Ottawa Glandorf is. Shelby is in two, Circleville three, Gilmore Academy four, Clyde is in five, OG in six, and West Branch is in seven. Savannah Recker is listed here as the leadoff runner for Ottawa Glandorf. Santa Recker is going to hand off to Olivia Grothaus. Next will be Delaney Dooling and then Avery Fox. Three sophomores and one junior make up this relay. Uh, and that was a good handoff there. Nice handoff there between Savannah Recker and Olivia Grothaus. Four by one, you gotta get everything right. The finish can be so tight, so close. Delaney Dooling with the baton. Top two will make it automatically to tomorrow from each of these heats. Another nice handoff there. Avery Fox battling with Clyde's Cora Liskai. And they're gonna get in for a second place finish, I think. Check the board to be sure. Clyde first, 48-85. And Ottawa Glandorf with the automatic qualifying into tomorrow, 48.91 is their time.
heat two of three in the girls' 4 by 100 meter relay. Belle Fountain is in lane three, leading off with Kylie Adams. The other runners are Gerard in two, Belle Fountain in three, Port Clinton in four, Bucktel five, McLean in six, and Reddy in seven. We just watched the Ottawa Glandorf ladies run their way into a second place finish in their heat, so they are going to be in the finals tomorrow. We are hoping for the same with Belle Fountain in lane three. Kylie Adams, a junior, is going to hand off to Parker Pennerwood, who is a senior. Parker is going to hand off to Callie Shoemaker and then Ava Reeves. And we've got one sophomore, two juniors, and one senior on this team. Port Clinton looks to be your leader right now. Though Buckdell, actually, I probably misspoke, man. Buckdell, Lamira Trammell making some moves right there. Oh, and this is going to be close to the end between Bell Fountain, Port Clinton, and Buckdell. Remember, the top two automatically qualify the third and fourth best times. Well, the t final two times overall will also make a way in, so Bell Fountain's going to be hoping for that very thing. Port Clinton first, Bucktel second. Bell Fountain finishes third with a 49-26. Heat three of three in the girls' four by 100 meter relay. Van Wert is in lane four. Dayton Northridge is in two, Beachwood three. Van Wert four, South Point in lane five, Buckeye Valley in six, and Steubenville is in lane seven. Olivia Voss, the leadoff for Van Wert, passing to Macy Johnson. Mia Reger, and then anchored by Kendra Deering. Top two handoffs at this point look to be out there in the outside lanes. Buckeye Valley and Steubenville. Macy Johnson currently running for Van Wert. Nice handoff there by Van Wert from Johnson to Rager. I think that handoff actually really helped them move up to where they are at this point. And now it's Kendra Deering. Remember, we're battling for that time in order to be able to time in, if not in the top two. It looks like that's what Van Wert is gonna be battling for. It's gonna be a tight one, guys. Buckeye Valley wins with a 49-12. Steubenville is second. Beachwood third, 49-59. Van Wert finishes in fourth with a 49-78. Event 12, the boys 4 by 100 meter relay. This is heat one. Lane one, Coshocton. Lane, or rather, lane two, Coshocton. Lane three, Waynesville. Lane four, Marion Franklin. Lane five, Glenville. Lane six, South Point. And lane seven, Lakeview. We have three teams that come in in the 42 second range. Marion Franklin in lane four is your top seed time with a 42.02. You never want to count out Glenville, though. They come in with a second top seed time with a 42.54. Top two will move on. We're also watching this, even though we don't have any locals in this race, we are also watching that third place time because that becomes very important in case our local racers in the next heat don't finish in the top two and are hoping to time in. Marion Franklin's Terry Black really getting out there quickly. Very, very smooth handoff. Wow, Marion Franklin with a nice handoff. But some strong backstretch runners there really taking advantage of that quick straightaway. Oh, beautiful handoffs again. Handoffs are so important in all these races, but most essentially in this four by one.
lane four, Marion Franklin, lane five, Glenville. Those appear to be your top two times, 42-76, 43-19. Third place is a 42, take that back. Third place is a 43-60 from Waynesville. Heat two of three in the boys' four by 100 meter relay. Napoleon is in lane two, leading off with Eli Snopley. Indian Valley's in three, Bay in four, Huron in five, Shamana Julian in six, and Coldwater in seven with Gavin Zabrida. So our top seed times, well, I'm sorry, the third place time from the previous heat was a 43.60. So anybody who does not get in the top two in this heat wants to run faster than a 43.60 to uh, be closer to have guarantee to get into the finals. Nice handoff there by Napoleon from Landon Wikers to Hayes Bingham, getting ready to hand off to Hagen Gherkin. For a cold water, it was Zabrida to Ethan Elander to Nico Zahn to Jack Rethman. Looks like Rathman's going to hold on for that third place spot, I believe. I think Napoleon may have gotten fourth. It was here on first with a 42.27. Bay was second with 42.68. Coldwater gets third. Okay, yep, they did hold on to that third, 43.29. And Napoleon with fifth, 43.75. 43.29 now moves into the top um, seed the time to time in. So that's looking good right now for Coldwater. We're going to watch the next heat to see if they can hold on to that that time in spot. The final heat in the boys four by 100 meter relay prelims, this is heat three. In lane two, it's Woodridge. Three is Perry. Remember, it's not the Lima Perry, it's a different Perry. Gallia Academy in four, Taft in five, Galleon in six, and Edison in seven. Coldwater came in third in the last heat with a 43-29. So our, our, the, the goal here, of course, is that the third place finisher will um, be slower than that, which would mean Coldwater would make it in. Uh, actually, they could make it in even if the third place finisher is faster, but the fourth place finisher is slower because right now that 43.29, based off my information, is the first time to time in. Smooth handoffs there. It looks like I think maybe Gallia Academy was the first one. And Braden Simmons really taking advantage of that backstretch as well. Nice handoffs by these all these teams in all three of these heats. Ooh, take a look at that. Man moving his way down in lane five. He takes Taft to that first place finish, 42-72. Galea Academy finishes in second with a 42-95. Galleon third, 43-09, and Perry fourth, 43-19. Those are probably going to be your time in times, possibly most likely knocking cold water out, but check mile split for the specific Results. Event number 13, it's the girls' 400 meter dash, and our presenting sponsor, our premier sponsor rather, is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. In Walpock, Delphi, and St. Mary's, call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Sierra Grieber is in lane five. She is from St. Mary's. 
Lane two is Olivia Cherry from Oak Harbor. Three, Bryn McKeever from Buckeye Local. Four, Jane Kennedy from Hathaday Brown. Sierra Graber, St. Mary's in five. Jessica Church from John Glenn in six. And Morgan Spaulding is in seven from Columbus Academy. One lap around the track, pretty much a sprint. The last 200 is where you're really going to see the girls give everything that they have to give. Some runners do actually wait to give everything at the end. Using that back stretch to stride out with the biggest strides that they possibly can get. That's a key. And here they go. This is when they need to kick it in now. Remember the top two seed times with an automatic qualifying move into tomorrow. Jane Kennedy comes with a 54.94. That is the top time coming in. Take a look at Sierra Graber chasing her down, looking really strong, looking good. Moving into that second place spot. So it's Jane Kennedy in first. Sierra Graber is going to finish in second and move her way into tomorrow's finals. Jane Kennedy runs a 56-42. Sierra Grieber, 57-20. She dropped 0.5 from her time last week. Congratulations to her. We will see her tomorrow in the finals. Heat two of the girls' 400-meter dash. Here are your runners. In lane two, Mia Allard from Oakwood. Lane three, Sandra King of Buckdale. Lane four, Leela Mitchers of Hawken. Lane five, Nyla King of Toledo Central Catholic. Lane six, Bella Radomski of Chagrin Falls. And lane seven, Ava Travis of Johnstown Northridge. Top seed time coming in is lane five, Nyla King. Been watching her run for the past couple years. Beautiful runner. Not too far away from our viewing area, Toledo Central Catholic. Her seed time is a 55-46. Nyla King already getting out pretty quick. She is a sprinter, so you can see that sprint power in that first 200 right there. Also over there in lane three, Sandra King of Bucktel. Bucktel always cruises powerful athletes. All right, you can almost see him kick into that next gear. In fact, it almost looked like Nyla King just kind of did a little stride out. Not, I won't say she cruised, but she looked like she slowed down a tad bit on that back straightaway. Certainly is one of the strategies when running this race. But now she's kicking it up into a higher gear. Next to her is Leela Mitchers of Hawken. She's currently in second place. Nyla King's going to win this heat. And then lane four, Hawken will get second. The final heat of the girls' 400 meter dash prelims. This is heat three. We are watching lane four, Tatum Walsh from Bath. What a great season she's having. Lane two is Riley Hutton from Salem. Three is Mackenzie Rohde of Fenwick. Tatum Walsh in lane four. Lane five, Samaya Bradburn of South Point. Lane six, Savannah Little of Lake. And lane seven, Kenzie Bice of Ridgewood. Well, we thought we were ready, but we have we're bringing everybody back up. So they are so particular on every little detail here at the state meet. Sometimes we have noticed that they're a little bit slower on the starts than what we even see during the season because of that particularness. Person did walk out there and talk to Samaya Bradburn of South Point in five. She did look like she moved a tad bit, so maybe that's what they were referring to. She is the only one not in blocks. Interesting uniform note as well. South Point ladies sir, sir. appear to be running in t-shirts. They've got uh, t-shirts there. 
I wonder if there's a story behind that because we certainly don't see that very often, but we have been consistently seeing that with the South Point runners. All right, Tatum Wash, let's watch her move. This is her time. She really has had a real standout year. It's been a lot of fun to watch her uh, be so successful. She is in lane four in that blue jersey. And now she just kicked it up. Man, did you see that? How she just she just moved right into another level right there at that 200 mark because she knows that's how she runs her race. The last 200 is where she picks up her speed and she's moved into second place right now. She needs to hold on to that to automatically qualify. The runner out there in the outer lane is holding on but is not moving fast up. So as long as Tatum can keep what she's doing, can keep moving where she is, she's going to go straight to the final tomorrow and that's the case. Tatum Walsh from Bath finishing in second place. A time of 58.97. Caught your breath. Five, eight, you're done. Four inches. Seven. Morgan two, Spaulding two, of Columbus six, Academy What's going at five your feet, mind? four inches. Uh, well, I knew I was supposed to qualify. Like, I was ranked two and I, she, the girl in four runs really fast. My goal is just to ride her hip and that's what I did and I did what I was supposed to do, I qualify. So. Yeah, I'm super excited just to have this opportunity in general and just to hopefully get the rest of my goals. All four years, I have a little goal pin board in my room with little pieces of paper with all my goals on them and getting on the state podium has been one of them. So as long as I finish the race tomorrow, that'll be checked off my list. So. I mean, and this wasn't the end that our 4x4 wanted, but hopefully I can still come out and get it done tomorrow. Use it as some anger fuel or something. I don't even know what to say. I'm so disappointed in the 4x4. What's it like still being able to represent the name that's on the front of your jersey, being able to represent that community and that community? Yeah. I mean, I'm just so thankful for the Bath community in general, and just, it's been the perfect program for me. They've really invested in me, and I'm very thankful for that. You know, they've put a lot of time, energy, resources into me, and I credit a lot of where I am today to my coaches and the whole community in general, along with the work that I put in and just the time, but they've been so willing to work with me, and it's just been amazing, so... Event 15, the girls' 300-meter hurdles. Our title sponsor of our D2 State Prelims broadcast is Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. Well, stay tuned because our local runners will be in heats two and three, but right now we have in lane two, Olivia Johnson-Wilson of Streetsboro. Lane three, Ella Hochstetler of Wheelersburg. Lane four, Isabel Evans of Johnstown Northridge. Lane five, Claire Duricki of Lake Catholic. Lane six, Emily Thomas of Lexington. And lane seven, Jada Davis of Bucknell. Lane three is a, uh, no, lane four, Isabel Evans from Johnstown Northridge. Quick on those hurdles and quickly moving her away from the rest of the pack. She does come in with the top seed time of a 43.42. Oh, one fall over there. Unfortunate she is back up and running, is going to finish things out. Heartbreaking to have that happen at the state meet. Lane four. Isabel Evans from Johnstown Northridge, but there's a battle for that second place spot. That auto qualifier looks like it might be lane five, lane two dives over the edge. 44-1-1, it was Lake Catholic in finishing in second place with a 45-52. Oh, we hope that uh, the girl in lane two is okay. She did dive and she has taken a little bit of time to get, get off that track. 
Heat two in the girls' 300-meter hurdles prelims. We are looking at lane five, Isabel Henderson of Benjamin Logan. Other runners are Ella Rucker of Bellevue in two, Emma Sandker of Bethel Tate in three, Avery Davis of Brookside in four, Isabel Henderson of Benjamin Logan in five. Already qualified for the 100 hurdles tomorrow. In lane six, it's Zoe Caldwell of Cambridge. In lane seven, Aznet Hatter of Fostoria. Isabel Henderson is in lane four. Looks like she was about tied with lane three to be the first one over the hurdle there. But Ella Rucker from Bellevue moving up quickly there over in lane one, or lane two rather. Yeah, Ella Rucker from Bellevue. She's kind of that outside smoke right now. Some of the middle lane runners might not realize where she is. Isabel Henderson currently sitting in, looks like about fourth place. Not satisfied with that. Look at how she's using that last hundred to uh, come to her benefit. Who's gonna get, oh, I think, I think she got it. Let's take a look and see at the results. Avery Davis from Brookside first place. And it was Isabel Henderson, second place. So she is moving straight to the finals tomorrow. She ran a 45-85. Our final heat in the girls' 300-meter hurdles is heat three. And we've got two Bell Fountain runners to watch. In lane two, Callie Shoemaker of Bell Fountain. And in lane four, Kylie Adams, also of Bell Fountain. Lane three is Isabel Seelbach of Hathaway Brown. Lane five is Avery Cottrell of Fairfield Union. Six is Ariana Floyd of Firelands. And seven is Claire Schreiner of Sheridan. Kylie Adams had to pull out of the 100 hurdles last week as she was nursing a hamstring injury, so she did not have the opportunity to qualify for state in that race. Looking to make finals in this race, for sure. Kylie Adams just barely the first one, but she is the first one over the hurdle, and she's the first one over the second hurdle. Teammate Kelly Shoemaker also running quite well over there in lane two. Kylie looking very strong here as she comes into the straightaway with a slight lead. Going to need to hold on to it in this last part. This is the toughest part, folks, because this is when your body is just screaming. You got to do one more hurdle. And she clears it. Kylie Adams from Bell Fountain is the winner in Heat 3. I'm so excited. Um, I'm a junior. Like me and my coach, we've been working towards this since freshman year. And now I feel like this year it's finally possible. Finally have a chance for runner up or state champ. So I'm really excited. What does that do for your confidence? Oh, I mean, it just makes me want to go as hard as I can, leave it all out there, give it everything I got, no regrets. Event 16 will be the boys' 300-meter hurdles. But before we get there, we want to let you know, well, rather remind you, because we've told you a few times already, but it's never too many times to mention this name, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. You know, I am really grateful for organizations like Lee's who are very dedicated to what we do at WOSN. They are just with us through every single sport. And I just want to say thank you to Lee's for being that, uh, tr that, that reliable, uh, loyal business who supports local athletes. I encourage you to support them with their chicken and all the other fixins that they have to offer. We're fixing to offer you the boys 300 meter hurdles. We have three heats and we're gonna watch our bath runner in heat one in lane six and that's Ethan Cole. Here are the other runners in heat one. Nishan Kalians of Orange, Javante Barnes of Ponitz CTC, Lane four is Chase Lipscomb, 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 sorry about that, Fairfield Union. Lane five, Savior Folks of Steubenville. Ethan Cole of Bath is in six. Let's look for the blue. And then in seven, it's Wyatt Augsburger of Oak 
Harbor. Not too long ago, Bath Tatum Walsh, Walsh qualified for finals in the 400. She'll be coming up later in the 200 and then also has the four by four to run today. Lane six, Ethan Cole from Bath. That's who we're watching. Ethan Cole really had a really great race in the uh, regionals last week. He was not in one of the inner lanes, so he, uh, he had that outside. He was further ahead in the start because of the stagger, but it was great to see him come through and get that auto qualify finish there. Oh, runner, same, that was the same hurdle where another runner fell uh, in one of the girls' races. Oh, almost got a second one there. So two guys battling out for first. Ethan Cole right now is in the solid third spot. Remember, other than then the two auto qualifiers, there are the top two times to also make it into finals. So we're going to be watching those times in the next few heats. Fairfield Union is first. Steubenville is second. Ethan Cole of Bath runs a 39-39 to finish in third place in this heat. Heat two of three in the boys' 300-meter hurdles. We just watched Ethan Cole of Bath finish third in his heat. Here's who's running in heat two. Jonah Cadow of Bellevue. Carson Hotstetler of Indian Valley. That's lanes two and three. The defending state champion, Brayden Richards of Perry in four. The Division two Perry, rather not the Division three Perry. That is for Lima. Lane five, Mohamed Corey of Lutheran West. Lane six, Aiden Fox of Ontario. And lane seven, Brayden Braswell of Chippewa. We're watching the clock because Ethan Cole has a 39-39, currently third. Top two times after the auto qualifiers will also make it to tomorrow's finals. Lane four and lane six were the first ones to get over the hurdles, but lane four, your defending state champion is just stepping it up. Wow, he's got a really big stride between those hurdles. Really uses his uh, length of his legs, which he's not a real, real tall guy, but he's definitely a fast guy, and he knows how to just glide right, just slightly over those hurdles. Take a look at Braden Richards, your defending champion. He is a senior this year. He is going to cruise his way into this prelim and into tomorrow's final. Our final heat of the boys' 300-meter hurdles is heat three, and we're watching lane three, Owen Wilkins of Liberty Benton. In lane two is Austin Shepard of Batavia. Wilkins of Liberty Benton in three. Bo Harkelroad, uh, Harkelroad of Huron in four. Marcus Hubanks of Batavia in five. Lucas Pollard of Field in six. And Adam Cooper of Morgan in seven. Good news is Ethan Cola Bath still stands at that top time in time. And when I say that, I mean the top two times after the auto qualifiers, he is still the top one in that. And we are, of course, hoping that that continues to be the case through this heat. Nice start for Owen Wilkins. Good first hurdle there, good second hurdle. It's really tough to say who is in first right now, though. It does look like it's Bo Harkle Road from Huron. It's amazing in the 300 how that just, in the middle of the heat, that's, or the middle of the race is when you really start to see that uh, come to play. Two guys here, lanes four and lanes five. Huron leading, Batavia second. Liberty Benton is going to finish in. Hold on, we're going to wait and see. 37.88, 38.87, top two times. 39.36 is the third place. 39.93 from Liberty Benton is fourth. He might knock uh, Ethan Cole of Bath out. You're going to have to look at mile split to know for sure. Fourth place for Owen Wilkins from Liberty Benton with a 39.93, and it looks like that just might get him into tomorrow's final. I'm just extremely honored to, uh, to represent Bath at, at this level. 
I'm extremely blessed uh, to get to this point. Uh, all the hard work and dedication, all those hard 400, repeat 400 workouts are really paying off. <laughs> and uh, I really want to thank my coaches for uh, putting me in this position here, picking me where I'm supposed to be. And uh, yeah, I'm just elated. Event 19 is the girls' 200-meter dash. You are watching the Division II State Prelims 2024 State Track and Field Championships at Welcome Stadium and the University of Dayton. Our presenting sponsor is Laudix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for more than 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at laudix.com. And speaking of Van Wert, we have a Van Wert runner in this heat. Heat one of three of the girls' 200-meter dash. Lane six is Macy Johnson from Van Wert. The other runners are in lane one, Leela Matrice, Matrice of Hawken, lane two, or lane two. I've been doing that the whole time, haven't I, folks? Lane one's not being used. Lane two is Leela from Hawken. Three is Faith Yancey of Circleville. Lane four, Nyla King. We've been watching this beautiful runner for the past few years. She's going to be in lane four. She's from Toledo Central Catholic. Lane five is Brianna Bratz of Lake. Lane six, Macy Johnson of Van Wert. And in lane seven, Idrea Caldwell of Meadowdale. Nyla King already taken off, gaining ground right there. We saw her beautiful runs earlier, launching herself into the final. She is currently in first, but look at Macy Johnson, second place right now. Macy Johnson from Van Wert making it to the finals in the 200. Let's take a look at her time. Nyla runs a 24.95. Macy Johnson with a 25.22. We'll see her in the finals. Heat two of three. And we're watching lane two. Tatum Walsh of Bath has already qualified in the 400. She is here now in the 200 and will still be running the four by four yet today. In lane two, it's Vivian Mompere of Madeira. Lane three, Shayna Coleman of Kenton Ridge. Our lane four, folks, I keep doing that, don't I? Lane two, Tatum Walsh. Lane three, Vivian. Lane four, Shayna Coleman. Lane five, Manaya Mitchell of Bucktel. Lane six, Bryn McKeever of Buckeye Local. And lane seven, Celeste Hutchinson of Beechcroft. Set. Nice start by Tatum. Really got out of the blocks well. She's running strong, too. Shayna Coleman of Kenton Ridge. We watched her last week in Piqua. Yeah, Shayna Coleman. Twenty-four seventy-one is the winning time. Second place, Madeira. Twenty-four Bucktels. Twenty-five nineteen is uh, third, and Tatum Walsh gets fifth with twenty-five sixty-five. Now for the final heat in the girls' two hundred meter dash. This is heat three. In lane two, it's Mia DiPortillo, DiPortoli of Rossford. Lane three, Jane Kennedy of Hathaway Brown. Lane four, Mariah Moore of Gilmore Academy. Lane five, Emma Lane of South Point. Lane six, Dakota Houston of Beechwood. And lane seven, Sabria Jones of Steubenville. Set. 
So we already have Macy Johnson in the final. She finished second in heat one with a time of 25.22. I'm sure Macy was really thrilled to make it in that final. The Van Wert girls have come so close in so many races. So it's gonna be great to see Van Wert represented in the finals tomorrow. Represented right now on this track, it appears to be lane six, Dakota Houston of Beachwood. This was a close one. She runs a 24.73. Steubenville gets second with a 24, 24.87. I would say it was all based off that first curve. I knew I had pretty good top speed, but if you don't get out when you're on the outside, you're gonna fall really short. So just making sure that I got out and I tried to stay even with whoever was in first. And so what's your reaction knowing you're competing for a state title tomorrow? I'm so excited. Um, this is my first ever individual event at state and it's my senior year. And um, my other events, my relays didn't go very well. So I'm, I'm very excited and ready and ready to prepare for whatever comes next. Event 23, it's the girls 4x400 four meter relay. Our broadcast of the Division II state track prelims, title sponsored by Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture and outdoor kitchens, it's Ultimate Outdoor. We are watching lane five, and that is Bath. Here are the other competitors in this heat. Perkins in two, Salem in three, Gilmore Academy in four, Bath in five, Woodridge in six, and Fenwick in seven. We just watched Oak Harbor win in four minutes, 0.47 seconds in the first heat. Third place went to Huron with a four minute, 0.78 second. And it's important because as we've talked about the whole time, the top two in each heat move on, and then the next two top times will make it. Though we did watch the officials meet together, and it looked like one of the uh, teams was disqualified. As of right now, we don't have the information on which team that is. Lane five, Bath, Haley Hale, the leadoff runner. Haley will pass off to Isabella Bartlett, then Gwyneth Faust, and then Tatum Walsh will be the anchor. It's 12.30 p.m. The temperature gauge says it's only about 70 degrees, but it definitely feels hotter up here where Jacob and I are in the stand, so I can only imagine how hot it feels down there on the track. The sun is shining brightly, and I felt like we might have seen some of that in the times in heat one. We did not have any relay teams break four minutes in heat one. These ladies will stay in their lanes for this entire lap, passing off with a slight stagger. Remember it is in Bath, in, is in lane five. It's about Bartlett with the baton next. Once the ladies get around the curve and they get to those small orange cones, they'll be able to move over to lane one. Bath currently sitting, oh, nice move over into, almost in that yeah, second place spot there, nice. Nice lead off 200 run there by Isabel Bartlett to move her team into second place. They come in with a 358.77. One of their coaches, Ryan Shadowall, believes they can go faster. We'd love to see that happen here at the state meet for the Bath 4x4 four four girls. Bath has moved into third place, getting ready to pass off to Gwyneth Faust. Bath girl trying to hold off the runner right there. Jacob, just want to make sure that you're on that straightaway back there on our blue runner, our bath runner. Uh, trying to hold off, keep that third place spot. Getting ready to pass off to Tatum Walsh, who, as you know, has already qualified in the 400 for tomorrow's finals. A very strong 400 runner. She just ran the 200 not too long ago, 
but a lot of times the adrenaline of this meet can do a lot for these runners to get them moving and get them fast. Oh, a battle there for first and second. We got a new leader for the first spot. Bath currently in fourth place. All right, here we go. We're going to watch Tatum Walsh do her thing as she kicks it into high gear and moves her way around the track. The blue jersey. Uh, <laughs> you can see the sprint is going strong for her. And the thing about Tatum that's really great, you know she kind of does that reverse split. So we're going to see her kick it in about the 200 mark. Uh, we're going to see her just put it into another gear. We saw that happen earlier in the prelims and here she goes she just did it folks and the girl who just passed her is going to get passed again maybe hopefully yes here goes tatum straightaway time guys this is where we find out exactly what's going to happen Looks like Bath is going to finish fifth in this heat. Gilmore Academy will be first in a 357.35. 358.93 was second. Woodridge is third. Our Fenwick is fourth. Bath finishes fifth with a 401.17. Time now for the third and final heat in the girls' 4x400 meter relay. We're watching lane three. That's Ottawa Glandorf, Bria Rucker. Emma Herringhouse, Avery Fox, and Corinne Clausen. Other runner teams in this heat are Chagrin Falls in two, OG in three, Oakwood is in four, Fairfield Union in five, Ontario in six, and John Glenn is in seven. Division two finals will take place Saturday morning. We will be bringing you a highlight show of the placers. We won't have full coverage of races this year, but we will have a highlight show for you. Girls 1600 meter run will include Anna Buttlemeyer of Ottawa Glandorf and Kate Thormeyer of Bryan. Now I'm not telling you they'll be in the show, but I want you to know they're gonna be running. Also gonna be running in the 800, Corinne Clausen of Ottawa Glandorf and Liana Foreman of Ottawa Glandorf. In the girls 3200 meter run, Nicolette Stickney of Bryan and Anna Buttlemeyer of Ottawa Glandorf will be running. So we look forward to watching those ladies do their thing tomorrow because that's when you get to see the distance runs. All right, here we go. This is it, the final girls prelim race of the D2 prelim day. Ottawa Glandorf is in lane three. Seeing some strong running in lane five from Sarah Leppi, Fairfield Union. They appear to be in the lead, though that is certainly just an appearance right now. Actually, lane six, Ontario, Sasha Bulakowski also with a strong run at the moment. But Ottawa Glandorf in three is who we are rooting for in this heat. That's Bria Recker, the freshman, bringing it in and preparing to hand off to Emma Herringhouse, another freshman. Looks like they're possibly in around the third place uh, position. Kind of hard to tell since they are still in the stagger. I mentioned the heat before. We didn't see any teams go below four minutes in the first heat. We did see some teams go below four minutes in the second heat. Here we have coming in only one with a seed time below four. 358.52 is the seed time for Oakwood. Four ladies really battling right now. Got to watch the ones on the inside because they can get blocked in. And that looks like where OG is kind of stuck at the moment, has tucked right behind, but still is in very good, uh, very good range to make some moves. Nava <laughs> Glander is going to hand off in fourth. Fourth place, but not out of it, not out of it at all. Avery Fox. Avery's been here before. She's run at state before. And she is ready. Take a look. She's now moving her team 
into the third place spot. Let's see what she can do on the straightaway. This is the place to make the move if this is your style of running. She's striding out a little bit, but she still moved her way into second place there. Top two in this heat will move directly on to tomorrow. Final 200, it's time to kick it in now. Gotta hold on to the place or move ahead. Avery's gonna hand off to Corinne Clausen, another seasoned state runner. Otto Delander trying to hold on to that second place spot. Oakwood trying to take it, but isn't going to. Avery Fox hands off in second place, and Corinne Clausen will be the last lap around the track, wanting to keep that second place surety to move into tomorrow's finals. All right, here she comes. OG moving their, her team back into second place. Moving ahead of Oakwood. And as long as she can hold on to that last moment, oh, we're going to have to see because that was a very close finish. We're waiting to see the results here pop up on the big screen. Ottawa Glandorf does get the third place spot. So Oakwood 358.68, Fairfield sneaks in at four minutes, 0.27, Ottawa Glenn with four minutes, 0.29 for third place. Check your mile split, folks. You can see everybody who qualified for tomorrow. That wraps it up for the girls. We'll be back for one more boys race coming up after this. Time now for our final heat, our final race in the Division II state track prelims from Welcome Stadium and University of Dayton in Dayton, Ohio. It's the boys four by 200 meter relay and we are going to show you heat two. Ottawa Glandorf will be in this heat. Before we do that though, we wanna remind you our presenting sponsor is Laudix. Laudix Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for more than 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at laudix.com. And our premier sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Walpock, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. In this heat, we have Gilmore Academy in two, Rogers in three, Brookville in four, Carroll in five, Fairfield Union in six, and Ottawa Glandorf is in seven. I just want to take a moment to uh, just uh, give a shout out to Ty Rosengarten. La la last week at regionals, he made the decision not to run the 3200 and instead run the four by four. There was not a lot of uh, rest time. He chose the four by four, which made which his his involvement helped get his team here to state. So he gave up the 3200 to do this for his team for the four by four, and I think that's great. We will see him tomorrow in the 1600, as well as Liberty Benton's Gabe St. Amour and Van Wert's Owen Scott. Also taking place tomorrow in the boys' 3200, it'll be Owen Scott of Van Wert and Tony Stewart of Bell Fountain. So make sure you tune in to our D2 Finals highlight show for all of that action. Time now for this action. Way out there in lane seven, it is Ty Rosengarten. He is going to be the leadoff for the Ottawa Glandorf's 4x4. Glenville was the winner in Heat 1. They ran a high 319, and they pretty much ran away with the lead in that heat. Top seed time coming in for this heat is Brookville with a 321-16. Our OG boys come in with a seed time of 324-42.
Kai Rosengarten looking strong here as he gets ready to hand off. Now remember, there is still a stagger, so he is not quite in the second place spot, though it looked, but it's around the third-ish. It was pretty close there in that uh, handoff. Alec Schroeder is the second runner here. Ethan Metzger will be the third runner, and Mason Vogt will be the anchor. Oh, gee, guys, certainly for currently sitting in fifth place, though knocking on the door of fourth place right at this moment and getting ready to just about take over fourth place. Not quite yet. We're focusing here on our OG runner, which you probably don't necessarily see is that there is a lead change going on right now so that there is a new leader in first. Our OG guys are currently in fifth. All right, Jacob just informed me. Yeah, you can see what's going on because he's making sure that he's got everybody in the shot, which means you are seeing that guy go all the way from the sixth place spot into the first place spot. It's amazing how things happen in the four by four. Every single leg can be a new race. Remember last year when we used to watch Alexa Fortman come up from behind and bring her team into the lead. Alexa, by the way, doing great things in her division one running. We had a great time talking with her last week in Piqua. If you didn't hear the uh, interview, go to the Piqua Regionals and watch the girls' 3200. All right, passing off now to Mason Vogt. Oh, oh, almost a collapse there. Hopefully that runner is all right. Oh, geez, Mason Vogt making his way around. Our guys are certainly sitting in sixth place in this heat. Speaking of heat, it's not just a running heat, it is getting hotter out here and it is noontime, so they are under the height of the sun. Definitely a little different situation than what our runners usually have in their high school running, since most of those are in the evenings or on Saturdays and quite honestly in the rain or cold a lot of times. Lots of cheering going on as the race is on for that top two spots to auto qualify. Our Ottawa Glendorf Titans are going to make their way in for a sixth place finish. Certainly incredibly proud of everything that they have done this entire season. Well, folks, that is going to wrap it up for us. Go to milesplit.com or go to the OHSAA website and click on track and field. And you can watch all of the, uh, you can see all the results and see exactly who is going to make it into the finals. Don't forget, we also have other broadcasts that you might be interested in watching. We've done the Division Three prelims. We are doing the Division Three finals. We have a Division Three. Uh, field event highlight show that uh, just aired. We'll be able to watch it again as well. And we will have a Division II highlight show that we are going to shoot tomorrow. And it will also be airing on WOSN. For Jacob O'Neill and all of us at WOSN and Jack McGuire, he's down doing interviews. Don't want to forget him as well. For Jason, Jack, and myself, I'm Jennifer Beck. Thanks for watching this broadcast of the Division II State Track Prelims. Coming to you from Dayton, the University of Dayton, you're watching it on the one and only WOSN.